Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily. And look who I got here. I got my albino blue tongue skink, eastern blue tongue. And I haven't had any luck with these guys, but this year I think we're going to do it. Right? Right, buddy? This year you're going to do some breeding for me. We're going to produce some really cool looking babies. And we're going to make it happen in the blue tongue project. Although you don't have a blue tongue, you have a pink tongue because you're an albino. Albinos don't have blue tongues. Isn't that amazing? Anyway, I, 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 love, I love these guys. I've been, once again, I always talk about, you know, having animals you just kind of put in the drawer, in this case, in the cage, with the beautiful light, and you just kind of just enjoy them. And when it's time and you think you got their, their patterns and their behaviors down, you breed them. And I just didn't have it down. And I think this year, finally, I got them. You got to put some nice size on. I found out something about these guys. Everyone always tells me, oh, their blue tongues eat so much. My blue tongues don't eat that much. They don't, they eat when they want to eat. <laughs> and, that's really about, and you know what? They gain weight and they grow. And this guy was really thin last year after I wintered him. And maybe that's why he didn't breed. I don't know, but he's, he got up to size. He had a really good year. He basks every day in his little light that I have him in. And hopefully he's gonna go for the girls this year, right? <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna show you some cool stuff today and maybe some stuff you might wanna buy, some stuff that's gonna be going up on Morph Market and some other cool stuff in my collection. Just a, another potpourri day here on a Monday. Hopefully you guys are having a great day. Let's take a look. All right, we have a nice male, super scaleless head or scaleless animal. This is a, uh, a blade, I believe. It is a possible blade. Scaleless, um, he's been, I, I, I always like to hold my scaleless animals back a little longer, get them eating. This guy has never missed a single meal since he was born. He looks great. Um, he's doing well. He, I, you know, I, I, I can't keep all of them, so I, I'm going to have to let some of them go. This guy's one of the guys I'm going to be listing up on Morph Market. If you guys are interested, he's really, really beautiful. Um, he's almost got like a whitish looking, you know, coloration in the front part of him. We got birds coming here and visiting while we're doing these videos, blue jays. It's wonderful to be in Florida. So if you're looking to get into the scaleless project, this is a great little boy to pick up because you can, you know, you breed him to anything and everything is gonna be scaleless head. You can get it into other morphs right away. This is a, a really nice, you know, quick way into the, into the project. I had to start with heads and obviously produce my own, but you know, now I'm, uh, I'm going pretty good and uh, I'm really liking the project a lot. I kind of figured out the whole shedding thing. Keep them on bounty paper towels, keep those paper towels wet all the time. Just every day I put a little bit of water in them. Not super saturated, I just keep them damp and wet and they shed no problem. You can see how nice and vibrant his uh, skin is here. And here is my female that I have for sale too. This is a female, same, uh, this is the sister of the other one. This is a possible blade, super scaleless. And uh, she's, you know, putting good size on, also has not missed a meal. I think it has a lot to do with the parents. The mother is a great eater. The father is a terrific eater. Uh, and I think it's because, you know, these scaleless heads that are kind of normal or even have like a single like blade or some kind of like a very common uh, morph in them. I think a lot of times what happens is they're really good eaters. It's when you start putting in a thousand genes, sometimes you get some trouble eaters, but um, I've found that the, uh, the St. Gallus animals really, really uh, eat well. I haven't tried to breed them yet because I only had a female. Maybe next season I'll try to breed her, but you can see they, they ambulate really well too. And this female's really nice. So if you guys wanted to put a pair together or if you wanted, if you wanted a female, one a male, they're available. Those are my only two super scaleless that are going to be available. I'm keeping the other one uh, because it's a, a head clown. <laughs> and that's just the way it goes. But I wanted to give you guys an update just so you can see what's going on here. They're really nice looking animals. Uh, the scaleless project now is very affordable. Unlike when it first started, they were 50,000 bucks the animals each. I even didn't, I wouldn't go there. I waited till they got a little more reasonable. Love this project. If you like anything a little different, you know, this is certainly a, a great project to get into. All right, here's my female that I produced uh, last season. I wanted to show you her. She's put on some really nice size, just to give you an idea of how they look as they get a little older. Same parents, actually, just a year difference. 
and she's once again another one hasn't missed a meal um, I had some shedding problems with her early on because I didn't really I was trying a million different methods and you can see and I've showed you this before they do have a couple scales on them they're not completely scaleless they do have some random scales here and there on their body but this female is great because you know like I said she's a great eater um, once again I had to soak her a few times initially to get her sheds off but now I know exactly the best way you know to do it and it's paper towels that are damp all the time and you can see her belly and really nice just a nice looking beautiful snake it's just a different type of snake it's not it's almost like you don't have a ball python it's like another species almost you know and if you're into something different and then trying different stuff this is uh, definitely the project to get into you know it really it's it's ball pythons but it, yet it's not it's like another genre of ball pythons i guess you can say scaleless ball python in a tree probably <laughs> never see this in nature that's for sure because you'll never see a scaleless you probably never see a ball python in a tree but you're certainly not going to see a scaleless one in a tree that's for sure um probably easier to, to climb in a tree for a scaleless than it would be even a scale ball python i don't know but it looks kind of cool right <laughs> there, there she is there's my little girl what a good little snake this is a great i love this little girl she's she's really a good ball python She's a great eater. Hopefully she'll breed for me in another year or so. I just don't think she has enough size in her yet, but I've been feeding her slowly, you know, just because I've been learning the game myself, you know, who knows how really long it takes, you know, or what kind of prey items. And I find that, you know what, they're, they're just as good at killers as the ones with scales on them. <laughs> There's nothing to worry about. You know, I haven't, ha I haven't had a single mouse, I don't want to jinx myself, a rat bite a scaleless animal. And maybe they know instinctually they better kill that thing as quickly as possible when it goes into the tub because they don't have the defenses of a normal ball python. So anyway, really nice snake. I thought you'd like to see it in nature. All right, this girl is a spider Mojave hurricane. I've had her in videos before. I've shown you she's got some really nice size in her. She's, she might even breed this year um, if uh, she keeps eating as well as she has been. You can see the, uh, the reduced hurricane swirls from the spider along this, the lateral aspect of her body here. Uh, you see the Mojave influence and of course the spider influence on the bottom here with this like really whitish looking color. But you can look at this little line right here along that kind of demarcates the, the, the dorsal and the ventral surface. It's, it's kind of weird the way it separates like that. Um, I've seen it before and, you know, spiders have similar type. That's like a really sharp line of demarcation there. Um, really nice looking girl. Once again, if you're looking to get into the hurricane project or maybe have a hurricane male and you and this, you want a female that's close to breeding size, this is, this is her. I'm gonna put her up for sale. I wasn't planning on it initially, but you know what? I really, really like her. I mean, I really, I really, so she's uh, not a snake I want to get rid of necessarily, but I have so, I have so many hurricanes I've held back, and I, I really want to um, thin out the herd a little bit because I got some I produced a lot of cool cool stuff in twenty, and uh, she's a little bit of a redundancy for what I have already in my collection. But if anyone else is looking to get into hurricane, this is a great girl once again with some really interesting looking stuff that almost now that I look at it, I almost don't want to get rid of her. Uh, but you know, she's. Uh, once again, one of the best eaters that I've seen. The hur hurricane spiders in general are good eaters. I think spiders in general are good eaters. And uh, I've always had good luck with the hurricanes eating too, which is, thank God. So if anyone's interested, you can hit me up on this. Uh, just a really nice looking girl. You know, we were just talking about snakes that eat and uh, don't eat. This snake was a great eater. And all of a sudden, and this I produced this girl and she just stopped eating. Or she eats every other week. That's what they do. This is a cinnamon, I, what I believe to be a cinnamon woma. I don't think it's spider in here. I don't see a spider, but a cinnamon woma, maybe pastel. Interesting looking fading pattern here. Um, she's just like very unique looking. And she was a one egg clutch. Uh, she survived, you know, the other ones just were bad eggs. And she just, uh, this is the only baby I've ever produced from this, this female. However, I think the female, the mama, the Cinnabi Woma, is going to uh, do very well for me this year. She's a lot bigger now. She just was a, she was a terrible eater, and which is probably <laughs> probably why this girl is not a great eater either. 
Uh, they're stubborn. A lot of times when they're younger, they're stubborn eaters. And then you have to just be persistent and you have to just have patience with them. And I find that they, they all start eating eventually, you know. Very rarely to get a snake that never eats. And it, believe me, it'll happen every once in a while. But usually when they get into real breeding adulthood and they start and they lay their first clutch, then after that they tend to be really, really good eaters. And this mom is a huge snake now. She just was a slow starter. But look look at the head pattern. I mean, look at the um, these stripes, these dorsal stripes. She just has some interesting stuff going on, and that's why I didn't let go over. And I like the gold flaking over here. Really, really nice. Just something different. You know, we're always into pied and clown and everything. I know those are the pot morphs, and I love them too. But sometimes you get some interesting looking, look at this. Really nice looking contrast. If I, if I had to paint a snake, this would be a really cool snake to paint just to get your colors right and your palette. It almost looks like the shadows, drop shadows here. And she's a good snake, you know. There's not much you can say about it. Sometimes I like to show you just, just cool stuff that I like to think is cool. And you know, I'm not, I'm not selling her. She's heck clown too, by the way. So I'm gonna see what we can produce in, in the way of a clown. Maybe a GHI Mojave pastel clown male will go to her eventually to get even more darkness in there. Or maybe I'll go light. I haven't decided yet. We'll see. And I'm going to end today with this gorgeous, gorgeous, what I believe to be a super mandarin. And she's spectacular. And, and actually, it's a he. He was a runt. He was the smallest one in the uh, clutch. I didn't think he was going to make it. I was assist feeding him. And I got to, you know, look, I'm as fallible as the next person. And I was assist feeding a little, maybe too rough. I don't know. And um, I actually perforated this little baby's throat with the, with, with pushing the pinky in a little too hard because that's how fragile this, this guy was. And I, I felt terrible about it. I felt so terrible. I, I was like, literally, I, I, I couldn't sleep the night, that night after I did it. And what I did was I put some bacitracin on it and I cleaned it off, obviously. I put bacitracin, triple antibiotic cream on it. I put it back in and I just left it alone. And, you know, it sat on the heat spot for about two weeks. I offered it prey. And remember, it wasn't eating before this. And I left it in there overnight. And when I came back, it was gone. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. And since then, this thing has been eating. So <laughs> I don't know if whatever I did you know, set something off in its head and all of a sudden it said, all right, I better start eating because this guy's going to keep assist feeding me. This this is going to suck. He's going to wind up killing me. And like I said, I felt terrible and said, look, I've made mistakes before. I'm sure we all have. A lot of people don't like to admit it. I admit when I make mistakes and I'm so happy. I didn't think this, I didn't think he was going to live. I thought he was just too small and I thought maybe something was wrong with him. That's why he wasn't eating. And he just decided I'm going to start eating and you know, like I said, I don't know if this is a Superman or it looks like it is. I'm certainly going to keep him back and hold him back and, and try to breed him out and prove he's Super Mandarin. He's gorgeous. He's got some really, really nice reds, deep reds in him. Uh, I mean, this is just like a really nice looking snake. And I'm so happy that he made it. And I'm so sorry that I, uh, <laughs> I almost killed him. But, you know. I didn't want him to die, you know, and I wanted to, I wanted him to have to, you know, to get some nourishment in him. It had been a few weeks before he had, he had eaten anything and he had never eaten alone. I mean, I had been assist feeding for a couple of weeks now, every couple, like two weeks, I would push a little pinky into his mouth and he just decided to start eating. And that's sometimes what happens. That means he was meant to be, you know, love the snake. <laughs> All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. And you know what? It was a fun day. You got to see some cool stuff, some the Scalus ball python project updates. You got to see some cool blue tongue skinks. And you know what? That's what it's all about. Sometimes, like I said, uh, you know, I wanna show you some of the more obscure projects I'm doing, some of the cool alternative projects I'm doing, and then of course, future projects that I have planned. And that's uh, hopefully what makes uh, life interesting. At least for me it is. I know a lot of guys can do just ball pythons and have plenty of interest in it. Some people just do boas. I like to have a little uh, variety, you know, a potpourri of everything. Um, once again, I try to just breed what I enjoy. And I think that's uh, the take home message here. If you guys work with what you really love, then you know what? You're going to be happy. Don't worry about what sells and what doesn't sell. I think people, so many people worry about that. The sun's coming in here. I got to move around a little bit. So many people worry about, you know, what, what, what's 
market value and what they're gonna make money on. Don't worry about that. Do what you like because trends change overnight. And what is not cool today or maybe there's too much of today, in two or three years, there could be nothing and you might be the only one breeding it. So breed what you like. I love berms. I hope I, I can continue to breed berms. I hope they don't change the law here in Florida. You know, they're trying to. And that's something I'm working hard not to, um, to try to make not happen. And uh, you gotta support US Arc Florida and we'll talk about that another time. But it's important because they're fighting the good fight and they're you know trying to keep the rights of us reptile keepers to, to keep and basically breed the animals that we love. And that's what it's all about, right? All right, guys, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button, turn on your notifications, hit the like button. We'll see you back tomorrow morning.